All right, guys, so it's time to talk about turbo upgrades. So um, if you're not familiar with the N54 platform, you call your BMW dealership and you say you need a bank one and a bank two turbocharger. They're going to tell you that you need to bring $3,500 to $3,700 up to the dealership and they will hook you up with some factory turbos that are pieces of crap. So that's kind of where this all starts. And um, uh, I say that because, you know, BMW had extended the warranty on their turbos because of these known issues. And, we're, and again, we're talking about stock vehicles, right? So you're not talking about the guys that are running 21 pounds of boost on their stock turbos or anything like that. So uh, you can gladly march yourself up to your local BMW dealership and pay that much money if you desire. But why? Why would you do that? Well, there's one reason why I think you should or could or would. Um, and that is if your car is, again, um, if your car is going to be left stock and your car is going to, uh, and you want to have a one year parts and labor warranty guaranteed hands down, then yes, you will be, you will spend that much on the parts. Um, that's not including any oil return or feed lines, coolant return or feed lines. If you were to find those that were damaged, you need to replace those. That's not including any gaskets. That's not including any hardware. That's not including anything but the turbos so you're gonna have you're gonna end up spending about sixty five hundred to seven thousand dollars if you decide to take your blown turbo in 54 vehicle to the dealer to have it replaced you should expect to spend about that much because of all the miscellaneous items you might as well do an oil change your coolant's going to be flush because they have to move the water pump thermostat out of the way to do the turbos you're gonna need an alignment because the subframes have to be pulled down to get to the turbos so um yeah, if you want to do that, by all means, that's your money. You spend that. But that didn't make the most sense for us, especially because, um, you know, it was one of the more expensive options. And what all of what we really wanted was something that's going to be reliable, something that's going to have a warranty. So um, there's a couple different turbo manufacturers out there. I'm going to go ahead and say right now that we did not decide to go single turbo on this build for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is our daily driver. And really, um, in my opinion, I don't think the single turbo power band is very daily, daily driver friendly, especially with an automatic. So I love using the M54's low to mid range torque to get around vehicles quickly, to merge quickly, to if you know if you've got two lanes of traffic stops here and you want to pull out in this lane and go. Um, you know I love using the power for that, and the single turbo power band just doesn't just not only doesn't suit the car for me and what I use it for, it doesn't suit the transmission that I have and, and all those other things too. Also wouldn't be able to fully really take advantage of a single turbo kit uh, because again, my transmission would limit my power uh, ability as well. So single turbo kit was kind of um, 86 from the beginning because of those things. So we didn't go single turbo. Um, also, so that kind of leaves a couple of different options. We have a couple of players in the game right now. We got MMP, we have Vargas, we have Pure, and we have a new company I believe called Franken Turbos. So um, we uh, did I did some investigation. I wanted to do a little bit of research, and uh, I'll start out with the Vargas, the GC 2.0s, because those really impressed me. Those had some really good um, games. Those had some really nice power numbers. They had some very good. Um, what I like to call objective information put out there. And they're making great power out there. A lot of people are happy. Um, but here's ultimately why we didn't go with uh, Vargas's uh, GC 2.0s. Um, it has to do with customer service. I know this kind of is like a, is a, is a, is a kind of beating a dead horse. But um, if you think about it as from a customer perspective, I'm coming into this, I don't know anything about your product. I don't know anything about your um, you know about you period and um, you know I'm you know I got three to thirty five hundred dollars of my hard-earned money and I'm looking to select a vendor for uh, a pretty important component on my vehicle and I go and I read all these horror stories about customer service issues about issues with the turbos about all these other things uh, that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence now I want to pause for a second because I've worked in retail and I understand that customer reviews are not everything. Um, the customer is not always right. Um, and, you know, sure, there's they probably got out there trying to push 47 PSI um, and 30 degrees of timing and blues motor and wants Vargas to pay for it because it was his turbo's fault and all that sort of stuff. And I understand that, 
sometimes that's it, and you have some idiots like that out there. But I think that's probably more of the exception and not the rule. Um, and for there to be so many consistent um, customer service issues with um, you know, the product and with um, a lot of things uh, that people have said, it doesn't leave me very confident uh, spending my money there. Um, again, I'm not bashing the pro products most likely excellent. Actually, I had a buddy that had ran um, some game changers on his 335, and that was the first taste of N54 that I ever had, and I was very impressed with the products. Um, but for me, I didn't. It wasn't confidence inspiring to put my money there. Um, Pure was one of the more expensive options. I didn't really look into Pure and Franken Turbo very hard because what I found at MMP, I was very impressed with, very impressed with. Um, so we ended up going with MMP Stage 3s. Uh, let's take a look at those. All right, so as we talked about, we were going with MMP Stage 3s, but before we get into those, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about the factory turbo setup. And as you can see uh, here, um, I'm sorry, the photo isn't that big for my resolution, but uh, the factory turbos are here, right? This is the factory front one, and the back one actually outlets over here. The downpipes go run through the middle. So just to, just for people that don't know, um, you know what the factory setup is. Uh, so anyway, this is kind of a cutaway of the factory setup without the without the engine block in the way. And you can see, let's do here. So we see the outlets uh, running from the back here, going up and wiring into here. This pipe's actually pretty restrictive on the factory. The factory pipe's pretty restrictive. Uh, but again, small turbos on the factory setup, so you don't need. You can take advantage of a bigger pipe, but BMW engineers set this up to run 8 PSI boost. So for 8 PSI, everything's pretty uh, adequate, with the exception of the intercooler, it could be argued. Um, also, one tip here as well, let me do this, so this will be help you guys with the intercooler install. This clip right here is the one that you have to cut. Um, is the one that they're saying you have to cut. So whenever you cut this clip that I just circled, that's the one that, that comes that's basically the hard one to get to because you have to cut it off and it's really tight in the car. I lucked out. Somebody had done my intercooler on my car already and it had a regular everyday clamp on it with a eight millimeter or six millimeter nut on it. And so I just loosened it up and pulled it off. Um, and here's a, here's give credit to N54 Tech for this picture. This is inside uh, where the turbos are. He's got it uh, perfectly labeled. You got your O2 sensors over here, and then the downpipes in the middle here as well. These huge catalysts. We watch my downpipe video if you want to see a, a comparison of the factory downpipes versus aftermarket downpipes. It's huge. Also, take note here as well. Look at how much this vac inlet here pancakes down so this is a big reason why inlets help you make so much more additional power even on the factory turbochargers um, so these inlets actually don't even fit most aftermarket twin turbo solutions so um, i think some of them there's some turbos out there that will work with these but again you kind of you want to get rid of those because race car right because anyway moving right along so this is a box. These are my personal MMP turbos. So this uh, don't don't worry uh, about the lack of packing. I actually picked these up from MMP. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you were to order these and get them shipped, it would not look like that. But anyway, you can see the ceramic coating. Uh, they actually kind of got coated from two different companies. I'm not worried about it. They look great. They 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 are actually. Uh, we'll, when we talk more about them when we get to the other photos, but as you can see here, these are actually the new inlets they, and outlets. They are two inch in diameter all the way through. Uh, the, the factory, in, um, and you'll see why, the factory inlets do not work with these turbos. Um, and here's why. So look at the factory turbo on the right, and then you can see the 19T housing on the left with the TDO4 HL bearing size in there. And you can see why the first of all the factory plumbing doesn't fit um and if even if it did do you really want to choke it down uh these huge turbos now with that now these turbos are considered hybrids they do utilize a factory housing uh which is i believe probably the weakest point of the turbo is that it utilizes factory exhaust housing um however 
um, the, the, the compressor wheel is so much larger. They've done a lot of work. They've actually milled out the, the exhaust housing to accept these larger 11 blade uh, GTX style uh, blades in there. Um, so they've done a lot of work on these to help you know make the power that they are uh, that they're rated for which is about 700 wheel I believe Mauricio posted a 45 50 wastegate duty percentage duty cycle percentage at 30 psi now we're gonna run out of fuel before then and we'll talk about the supporting mods on a different video but this is a good comparison of the stock turbo versus the MMP stage 3 and it's massive these are my personal turbos again um, here I'm super stoked to get them put on the car everything is super nice MMP did a great job um, sandblasting ceramic coating the exhaust housings uh, putting everything together there's actually you can't see it but um, on this picture very well but their MMP logo is actually on the on the wheel which is awesome and again where you're going to get the more turret where you're going to get the better horsepower from is the inlet and outlet system first of all but also the size of the turbine the more the higher number count of of, uh, of turbine wheels you also they're much more aggressive in their angling as well with the with the inlets uh, and just a bigger turbo in general it's going to breathe easier going to have lower wastegate duty cycles you're going to make more power per pound of boost with these turbos and um, again very happy with the workmanship very happy with the quality uh, picked these up um, you know in person and just was blown away by how well everything was put together uh, so really happy there so again that hopefully that helps you kind of see the comparison with the stock ones and the other ones so as you can see there, um, those turbos, so again, so we decided to go with MMP for uh, Mauricio's am amazing customer service that we've experienced personally with him, um, made me comfortable spending my money with MMP. Also, we have a two year warranty on the turbos, so that makes us feel comfortable as well. And we also have the ability to upgrade to the 1K um, exhaust housings in the future if we so decide so decide to do the 1k manifolds um, which probably isn't going to happen but it's good to know that we can upgrade um, in the future so not only do we get the turbos we got the inlets we got the outlets we got the install kit we got them ceramic coated uh, which is designed to keep the heat inside the manifolds um, away from the outlets. We did go with silicone outlets. We'll see how that goes. I know we had people some concerns of burning their outlets. Uh, we're, so that's why we've ceramic coated. Uh, we're going to use the heat wrap and uh, we're going to install them properly. We're going to take pictures and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we install them properly. And I think we're not going to, I don't think we're going to have any issues, frankly. Uh, they're going to be installed properly. We're going to have ceramic coating and heat wrap. So um, I hope we don't have any issues with that. We're definitely going to keep our eyes close 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 on that make sure that the outlet pipe is not moving anywhere and so uh, the inlets uh, same thing we've got to grout those carefully make sure that those are routed out of the way of the belts and on the back side make sure that they're tight on the turbo snout so we got some uh, installation stuff to do um, but anyway my point was is we spent less money on all of that with the, and we got a two-year warranty um, versus the stock stuff so we were able to not only increase our reliability and increase our warranty and increase our horsepower uh, potential but we've also uh, spent less money than we would have on factory turbos which makes me very happy and also says a lot um, you know a lot of went into engineering these turbos and a lot went in from MMP so we were really excited to get these on the car uh, as far as the other stuff going on we have to get some um, NGK 97506 plugs which I believe are the factory plugs in the N20 and S55 we're going to gap those at 0 0.020 um, unless I see something otherwise we're going to get the Burger Motorsports uh, N20 T-MAP sensor adapter and sensor 
We're going to put that on our VRSF charge pipe. And uh, once we get all that done, hopefully by Friday or Saturday of this week, we are going to send it. We are going to get a tune from Justin Whithid, Whithid, Whithid I believe his last name is. Sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, have all kinds of great new things about his tunes. We are going to start with an E60 tune, and we are going to send it. Um, the only thing I think I'm missing right now is the oil catch can, um, and that will be put in the budget soon. But, um, you know, this, this whole turbo thing got used by surprise and all the supporting mods and stuff and everything. So uh, we will get that soon. But we're going to send it on an E60 tune, and I cannot wait for the first pull, um, the first time those things spool up. So um, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about reliability. So let's back up for a second and um, go back to the single versus twin debate here. And a lot of times people say that the singles are more reliable, and I agree with them if you're pushing the hell out of your turbos. Um, I am not, again, I am not going to push these MMP Stage 3s to their 700 to seven to a little over 700 wheel potential. Um, I'm not going to do that because they aren't going to last that long if I do that. And um, the people that are pushing their turbos to the limit, um, I believe, should indeed go with a single turbo because not only are they more um, built for that, but they're easier to change if they fail. So even if they do fail, just fucking four bolts, take it off and put a new one on. Um, but uh, personally, um, our goals with the 535, uh, and again, to maintain the daily drivability of it, maintain some mid-range torque, uh, our goals are going to be between 500 and 600 rear wheel horsepower. We're going to shoot towards the higher end of that on an E60 blend, and then we'll shoot towards the lower end of that on just 93. So uh, we're going to get two tunes. The first one is going to be an E60 tune because the car, when this all this happened, had a full tank of E60. So uh, first tune will be an E60 tune. I think it's going to be the most fun tune. Um, and then we'll get a 93 octane tune uh, down the road. Uh, you know, if we decide to go on a road trip or something, and there's no E85 available or, or for whatever uh, for whatever means we decide to do that. There's like three E85 stations around my house, so I'm perfect within five miles. So. Uh, E60 tune, we're going to send it, guys. I'm super duper excited. I want to thank Mauricio. Uh, I want to thank MMP for their excellent customer service and their excellent products. I want to thank um, BMS for their uh, ability to adapt the M20 map sensor to the car so easily. I want to thank MHD and Wedge Performance for allowing the, for constantly innovating ways to make the M54 platform even better. I'm not sure if you've been able to see their new um, flex fuel uh, stuff that they've just came out with not too long ago, I believe in July. Uh, but that is awesome. We might look into that in the future. But everything's coming together, guys. I'm getting really excited, uh, and that's kind of where we are. So uh, stay tuned for uh, driving impressions, tuning. Um, we might get a little bit of some install stuff. There's a lot of great DIY videos out there. I really don't think the Internet needs another DIY video on some of this stuff. Um, there's great DIY fuel pump video from um, Fuel It on the 535. Uh, um, ECS tuning came out with a great turbo DIY. Uh, I think uh, BM, um, Budget Beamers has a great turbo uh, DIY as well. So really no reason to have another one out there. I think those guys did a great job. Um, but we will have a little bit of installation stuff coming. We will have the hopefully some dynos coming next couple of weeks, and we'll get the tuning uh, squared away as well. So uh, we'll get some revisions of the tune um, squared away. So again, please like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned. We are excited. This is going to be the fastest car I've ever owned slash built, and I am ecstatic. The car looks stock. The car is debadged, and it's going to be just the looks like a normal E65 series with tinted windows. So uh, the car has a stock exhaust except the downpipe, so it is going to be a sleeper. So if we're able to make around 600 wheel, we'll go do some Hellcat hunting. So anyway, hope you guys like the, hope you guys like the content. Click that bell notification so the second I upload that video for the installation or from the turbo, uh, from the from the tune, uh, you guys can check that out. So thanks, guys. Thanks for your support, and stay tuned. We will have something coming very soon headed your way.